You are listening to the Intelligent Vocalist Podcast, and today we're going to talk about ways to stop your voice from cracking. Oh, I hate when that happens. Welcome to the Intelligent Vocalist with John Henney. This is the podcast dedicated to help you be a smarter, better, more informed singer. And now, your host for the Intelligent Vocalist, John Henney. Hey there, this is John Henney. Welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Vocalist. I do so appreciate you spending this precious listening time with me. Today, I want to look at a topic that I first went in depth way back in episode eight of the podcast, which is, that's a few years ago now. And this is This issue of the voice cracking, you know, sometimes for inspiration, I'll, I'll just peck around online, see what people are, are looking for. There's a really interesting site called answer the public, and you can put any topic in there and it will tell you what people are asking about. And so I put in singing and one of the things popped up is why does my voice crack? How do I stop my voice from cracking? So episode eight of the podcast was why your voice cracks. And now I want to talk a little bit about that, but I really want to go into eliminating cracks and vocal cracks are probably the most embarrassing thing that can happen to us. You know, a bass player can make a mistake. A drummer can make a mistake. A guitarist can, can play the wrong chord and, the audience may or may, may not pick up on it, but if the singer cracks, everyone picks up on it. It's the most obvious mistake. And so many of our singing issues come from our attempt to not crack. The way we respond to stress and worrying about cracking is stressful. The way we respond to stress is to tense up, to grab, to try and muscle our way through. And what we end up doing is squeezing the heck out of our vocal folds. We try and hang on to our lower register or what is often called chess register, this acoustic place where we speak and where we feel the notes more powerful and more secure. But we try and keep that alignment, that adjustment, that acoustic setting, we try and take that too high. And that in and of itself causes so much cracking. So very often our vocal cracking is caused by our attempts to not have a break, to not crack. So let's break down what's happening in the voice. I I talk about this a lot, but I really like to simplify the voice. And I look at the voice as having three components, air, cord, vowel, ACV, the airflow, what you're sending to your vocal folds, your vocal cords, which is the C, the cord, the resistance of the vocal cords. And and this flow of air meeting the resistance of the folds, which then compresses the air, releases the compressed air. That's now a vibrating sound wave. And then the critical element of the vowel, the shaping of the acoustic chambers, which interacts with the sound wave in either a way that is helpful and gives us pleasing tone and stability and range, all the things we want as a singer, or if the alignment is less than optimal, it gives us not just poor tone and limited range, but breaks and cracks and all kinds of issues. So this ACV is so important. And air, flowing air to the folds, believe it or not, that's usually not the biggest issue. Now, don't get me wrong. It can be an issue. I've certainly seen it be an issue. And I correct people's breathing and lessons. But the airflow is not usually the culprit for vocal cracking. It tends to happen more at the vocal folds or your cords where they're, they're over compressing and they're grabbing, but even more important in those acoustics, 
the acoustics are essential. And I think of controlling the acoustics by controlling the vowel. You have two main resonators, the throat resonator and the mouth resonator. And the throat resonator is where most of the issues are occurring. And what happens is the throat resonator tends to be dominant in terms of its interaction and its energy boost with the sound wave in our lower register, where we speak, where we tend to feel more comfortable. What we need to do is allow the mouth resonator to become a little more dominant on these upper notes. And there's this handover, what people will often describe as mix, passaggio, register shift. It's this handover of acoustics. Yes, there are changes in the vocal folds and with the amount of air that you're sending. But again, if we're looking for one big fix, very often the vowels are the big fix. And what happens is the throat resonator tries to stay dominant. It tries to stay over-involved. And what we need to do on a higher pitch is in order for the throat resonator to align with the pitch, we have to, to decrease the space. A smaller space will boost higher frequencies, right? Again, that's why a trumpet is smaller than a trombone, a piccolo versus a flute, the smaller space. Now, making a smaller space with our throat starts to create issues. We start to raise the larynx. We start to employ outside swallowing muscles. We tend to start to close up the system. And the other thing is, there is a limit to how far this resonance chamber can go. And when we crack, what we are tending to do is we are hanging on to the sound wave with our throat. And as we go higher and higher, it's barely hanging on. And when it lets go, it will jump from this shout alignment and it will tend to drop all the way to a falsetto alignment. Oh! And then that's where the crack happens. It's a shift in the acoustics. The throat starts to redline, and then when it finally lets go, it really lets go. And it also influences the muscle. So you've got the vocal folds are starting to over-compress, over-muscle, and then suddenly the whole system just lets go. The compression at the folds lets go, the acoustics suddenly change. We lose the high frequencies so that we just get this more hollow sound, this lighter sound. And all the audience hears is the dreaded crack. Now, when we get the vowel right, when we get the acoustics right, it helps the vocal folds in the air. Because what it does is this boost of energy from a good vowel not this out of control, barely hanging on energy from the bad vowel, from the shouting, but a balanced vowel. It sends energy back down to the vocal folds and it helps the vocal folds resist the air so that we can give up some of the muscle. And in this more balanced resistance, we get a better relationship with the airflow in the vocal folds. It's, it's amazing when the vowels right, air and vocal folds tend to balance themselves. Not always, but very often those issues are maybe not completely eliminated, but certainly dialed back by a good vowel. So vowels are very, very important. And I talk a lot about vowels on this podcast. I'm absolutely obsessed with vowels. And one of the concepts that uh, Ken Bozeman talks about is the under vowel is the vowel that's more associated with your throat versus the vowel that's more associated with your mouth. The throat tends to give us the vowel perceptions of oo to o, going to an, an, an o-ish a, uh, bit of an a, uh, but it's, you can hear it if you uh, flick on your uh, throat resonator. That's about all you get. You do not get from the throat resonator these vowels, a, e, e. That happens in your mouth. Those are the bright, high, bitey vowels. Those 
are more the sounds of high belt, of high notes. And you can hear a brightness and a ring when a singer is effectively going for a higher note. But we don't want to lose the depth, the richness of the undervowel. We want to keep that, that ooh, oh, uh underneath. And that gives us the richness. So it's not just brightness. It's, it's richness, darkness, along with the bite and the brightness. That gives us the full spectrum of a good sung tone. And if we keep an idea of this undervowel, and what I often have singers do is just think of having a uh underneath whatever vowel they're singing. So if it's a, ah, it's a, uh, a. Ah. If it's e, it's a, uh, e. Now this, this is on the higher notes. And that helps keep the throat resonator from grabbing at the wrong part of the sound wave, the sound wave that it can't effectively boost. So it keeps the throat resonator in the proper part of the sound wave. Now, singers will very often think about, well, then I've got to push my larynx down. And that's okay for beginners, really thinking about getting your larynx down, even getting it really kind of dopey and, and overdone. That can be a good start because you can't, you can't squeeze, you can't grab. You're not going to yell with this over low larynx. You know, if you try that really dopey and then try and squeeze your vocal folds, you can't do it. You have to raise your larynx in order to squeeze. So that eliminates the squeezing and it would eliminate vocal breaks, but it's not a great singing sound. And if you are dumping your larynx too low, especially as an intermediate to advanced singer, you're going to struggle because you're not going to get the full impact of that feedback of energy, the full impact of a balanced tuned vowel. You're overshooting the mark. And when you overshoot, you get weakness, you get a dull tone. And if you're going for power, you're going to end up squeezing. So if you've been really working on vowel narrowing, on keeping your larynx low, and you are finding that your upper notes aren't as belty as you want, that they're dull, that you even find yourself squeezing, that's likely what's happening. The vowel is too narrow. Now, having said that, one of the most effective ways to eliminate cracks in the beginning, especially if you're really struggling with this, is very narrow vowels and very light narrow vowels. You have to develop the coordination of going for a higher pitch so that the vocal folds begin to be pulled and stretched and thinned with a stable larynx. At first, your larynx is going to want to rise with the pitch when you're first learning to sing. And there's a lot of issues there. So utilizing a sound like a very hollow coo, like a cuckoo clock, cuckoo, and just allowing coo, 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 that will eliminate a break. Because if you're going, ah, that's a yell. Coo, 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 coo. And so it's, it's a heady, falsetto -y sound, but that's going to start to work the coordinations. Then we can begin to open up the vowels bit by bit. So a more open vowel from oo is going towards o. And we can start to increase the intensity. So what I like to do is go from that like K sound to maybe a hard G sound. Now, not over hard. I don't want to say, go, go, go. It, you're not going to slam on the G. It's just a light go, 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 go. But you see, there's a little more on the voice than coo, go. I'm just working in a bit more. And then from there, we can open that up to ga. And you can feel yourself start to press in a little more. Mmm. Mmm. That feeling of being on top of the note, pressing down, as opposed to, huh, pressing up. Mmm. 
And then you can try different things like one. That's a great one because it's a, it's like a filter sweep. Wah. So you go, you start with the ooh, wah, and then you open up to the uh. And you can just try things like one, 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 and watch out for a wah. No, don't go too wide. Yeah, let us start with that narrow ooh. One, 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 one. One, 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 and you'll find that you're going to start to be able to find that place, that, that balanced spot where you can sing with some intensity, where you can lean in mm, without, huh, without grabbing, without the larynx choking up, without the vowel going wide, without the shout mechanism kicking in. And when you learn to start navigating through your register with that, that vowel substitution, right? So that if I had to sing the word my, I don't want to go my, right? I want that ah of my to be a little more uh, my. My, 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 instead of my, 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 my. No, I can't even reach it on the white vowel. So it's, it's substituting those vowels. So start to learn about vowel substitutions. Learn how vowels work because vowels are really going to be your friend. Vowels are going to allow you to make these alignments and eliminate these yells. And you can vary how open or closed the vowel is depending on your ability. If you're a beginner, Keep it pretty narrow, you know. So rather than one, you may want to just still stay on the foo, 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 foo. Because if you feel that tension, we need a very narrow vowel that's going to remove some of the higher frequencies, some of the energy. It's not going to be a very loud, intense sound, but that's okay. You can build up to it. And you know, even if you're an advanced singer, these are great to warm up on. You don't want to just start belting right away. And then little by little, you start to open it up and you start to work on vowel substitutions within words of songs. In general, if I give you my number one tip, pull everything on the higher notes, pull it all towards uh. So if you know, um, so if you're trying to belt and I will always love you, you just get the uh and I will always love you. That's going to pull that vowel more to center. And if you listen to really good singers, you'll hear this sense of, of uh. You'll hear, uh, even if the vowel goes rather bright in the over vowel, the under vowel keeps the uh. The under vowel keeps the balance. And that's how you're going to eliminate cracks. You get control of the vowel. It gives you control of your throat resonator. It stops grabbing at the higher parts of the sound wave. And listen, it's all well-intentioned. Your body's trying to help you, but your body will help you through tension. That's how the body responds. It's like a fight or flight. When you first get on roller skates or try to ride a bike, your body's going to tense up. Your body's trying to stop you from falling, but it inevitably makes you fall. And so your body's going to try and help you, but it's going to make you crack rather than um, eliminate cracking. So work on that. Go back in this podcast, find the episodes on vowels, check out my website. I've got all kinds of articles and just learn how this works. Learn how you can balance this and you'll start eliminating vocal breaks and cracks. Hey, if you want to know more about me, please visit my website, johnhenny.com and be sure to sign up for my free vocal warmups course. It shows you how to warm up through straws. If you are interested in being a voice teacher, click on teacher training. And if you're interested in lessons, click on lessons and my front desk will be happy to give you information. And until next time, to better singing. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.